Hello and welcome to this week 11 edition of Big Game Bound. I'm Chris Hagan. Four teams on a bye and no unbeatens remaining. The 72 Dolphins toasting champagne to the Washington Commanders after their upset win over the Eagles on Monday Night Football. This week's slate of games starts as usual on Thursday night. The Titans in Green Bay to take on the Packers. Here's our Corey Curtis in Nashville. Well, the Titans did it again Sunday, despite being decidedly shorthanded against the Broncos. Over half of their starting defense actually missed the game. Quarterback Ryan Tannehill did return, threw for over 250 yards and two touchdowns, and the defense didn't miss a beat despite all the injuries coming up with six sacks. Thursday night, though, they've got the Green Bay Packers, and that means getting players healed up from Sunday and hurt players back on the field and ready to play. Try to you know, do the best that we can to win the, the mental performance and the physical recovery battle here the next couple days. Everybody deals with it. Um, you know, they, they had a, you know, a tough game against Dallas that they were able to win in overtime. So uh, they're, they're dealing with the same things. All right, the Titans finished the game Sunday down six defensive starters. Jeffrey Simmons, Bud Dupree, Imani Hooker, Christian Fulton, and Zach Cunningham all missed the game. Cunningham just went on IR. David Long left the game with a stinger injury. Just how many of those guys the Titans get back Thursday could be the big difference Thursday night in Green Bay in Nashville. I'm Corey Curtis. Eight games in the one o'clock Eastern window on Sunday. The Browns will visit the Bills, who've now lost two straight. The no longer perfect Eagles take on the revitalized Colts in Indianapolis. The defending Super Bowl champion Rams have just three wins, as do the Saints. They'll square off in New Orleans. The Lions take their two game winning streak on the road to face the Giants. Panthers invading Baltimore to challenge the Ravens. The Commanders, they'll look for another dub in Houston against the Texans. Down in Atlanta, the Bears will try to maul the Falcons for more on this one. Let's bring in our guy Jarrett Payton a little bit earlier than usual in the show. JP, the Bears with three straight losses, but the play of quarterback Justin Fields is at least making fantasy owners happy. What about the fans there in Chi-Town? You know what, Chris? It's, it's amazing to see what people can kind of take from some of these losses. I mean, right now, the whole mindset is watching Justin Fields keep progressing as a quarterback, and I think that's what we've seen over the last few games. I know a lot of people aren't really seeing it with his arm, but also they're seeing it with his legs, and I get that, but also what he's been able to do in the red zone, his connection with Cole Komet, and what he's been able to do kind of just to progress as a quarterback, we're starting to see that more here in Chicago. So Bears fans are excited. They should be because I think they found the quarterback for the future. When you think about quarterbacks in this league, you know, they all have a different path to that starting role. And you see guys sometimes have to learn how to win, learn how to come through in that fourth quarter. Can you see Fields making progress in that direction? Because there's been some heartbreaking losses like the one against the Lions. Well, yeah, Chris, I mean, that's the tough part. I've been saying that when you look at all the great quarterbacks around the NFL, that's the one thing that they all have. And when it comes down to closing out games, they're either leading their team down with touchdown scores or setting up for a field goal. And we haven't seen that yet. Justin Fields doesn't have that in his resume yet. So we want to see him kind of get better, and especially late in games. It's not just him being better. It's, it's about the play calling as well. Luke Getze has to find ways to put his guys in positions to be more successful, but also as well, everybody taking accountability, running routes, and, and trying to get better that way when it comes to the scheme. So, yeah, they, Justin gets all the, the, kind of the focus, but it comes down to a team effort. All 11 guys on the offensive side of the ball have to get better. Now we're past the halfway point. Don't know if there's a playoff spot in the future for this Bears squad, but what are you hoping to see down this tail end of the season starting Sunday in Atlanta? I mean, the tough thing for me is, is watching Justin. The one thing here in Chicago that everybody wanted to see was Luke Getze getting him outside the pocket and running him a little bit more, more design runs. And I was one of those people that was screaming for it. But honestly, I want him to taper back just a little bit. If we're talking about development as, as an organization and trying to really build this roster with a lot of young guys on it, I don't want to see him running so much because we know his future as a runner, that's going to, you take too many hits, you're not going to be able to be on the field and be available. So I do want to see a little bit more maybe this week in Atlanta, dropping back, staying in the pocket, making some throws, and letting the running backs be able to take the, the carry the load when it comes to running the football and give Justin just a little bit of time because after the week against the Lions, he's been talking about it all week. His legs were really, really heavy. That's the fact when you're having two historic back-to-back -back games when it comes to running the football. So uh, 
140 yards that he's rushed for it hasn't been done since my pops. So, you know, he's in really good company right now. Yeah, you got to protect your franchise guy, got to protect your star players, and that's what we're going to do with you right now, JP. I want you to take a break. I want you to catch your breath, but don't run off. We'll see you in just a bit for Peyton's picks. And in Foxborough, the Jets trying to avenge a week eight loss to the Patriots. For more on New York, here's Joe Masseri. 13 straight losses for the Jets to the Patriots. And honestly, the Jets didn't look good when these two teams faced off just three weeks ago. Bill Belichick's defense managed to confuse Zach Wilson and Gang Green's offense. And Robert Sala knows his guys will have to figure out that stout D if they're going to pull off the upset in New England. It's taking care of the football. It's being opportunistic on defense. It's, it's executing your job to the best of your ability at 100%. The Jets offense was not operating at 100% in the first matchup of the season. Zach Wilson threw three picks in the 22-17 loss at MetLife. But Salah says it's unfair to focus on a few plays when evaluating Wilson's performance this season, even in the game against the Pats. From a narrative standpoint, to, to try to attack a young man for four or five plays when it four or five teachable moments in my mind. Last time, just from a personal perspective, um, it was a little too much about them, not like about us. Now, we're sitting in the position where you know, we win in first place, it's cool. And Belichick has made a career feasting on first and second year quarterbacks. In fact, up in Foxborough, quarterbacks in their first two seasons are just three and 43 coming into this game. Zach Wilson will try and figure out how to make it number four if he's gonna keep the Jets out of the bottom of the AFC East. Just three games in the four o'clock Eastern window. The two and seven Raiders head to Denver for an AFC West meeting with the Broncos. The Bengals back from their bye week and in Pittsburgh to take on the Steelers. And that brings us to our marquee matchup. The six and three Cowboys on the road again this week against the eight and one Minnesota Vikings. Here's our Mickey Spagnola. Still, nobody is happy here about the Cowboys' 31-28 overtime loss to the Green Bay Packers and in the locker room after the game. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, the players weren't very happy either, and Mike McCarthy was okay with that. We definitely weren't in there patting each other on the back. I mean, and uh, I mean, there's there was a ton of red, a ton of disappointment, uh, a lot of anger, and and that's. I think it, that, that points to the commitment, the desire to win, the connection. Um, so there's a lot said between a number of people, you know, and I love that. Conflict is good, you know, so that's how you resolve. Now, one concern the Cowboys have going forward, getting ready for uh, Minnesota, is the fact that Cowboys starting cornerback Anthony Brown suffered a concussion. He is in the concussion protocol. The Cowboys already were short a cornerback with Jordan Lewis out with the fractured foot. Uh, they were using Deron Bland. Now they've had to go to Kelvin Joseph. They're getting pretty slim in that cornerback room. I'm Mickey Spagnola. On Sunday night, an important contest in the AFC West. The division leading Chiefs paying a visit to the Chargers, a rematch of their week two Thursday night thriller. And on Monday night, an NFC West affair between the 49ers and Cardinals both teams playing catch up in the division behind Seattle. And now it's time for the hottest part of the show, Peyton's picks. Let's bring back the son of sweetness, Jared Peyton. JP, two and one last week, now 22 and eight on the season. It's amazing stuff. Only the Packers comeback win over Dallas kept you from perfection once again. Hey, man, you know, it's really hard trying to be this good for you, Chris, but you know what? <laughs> Let's do it one more time. Let's go, baby. Every week you complain about, oh, this is so hard. I'm going to go 0-3, and, and here you are. <laughs> Better than 70% picking winners. Let's get to this week's game starting on Thursday night. Your old team, the Titans, up in Green Bay against the revitalized Packers. Well, you know, Chris, it's November, so, you know, it's going to be cold up at Lambeau. So maybe this has, like, the writing on it of uh, King Henry, like, rushing the ball 35 times and kind of controlling the game on the ground. That could happen, and it's always hard stopping him. 
But there's something to say about the Green Bay Packers and what we saw last week and finding a way to be able to beat Dallas. And, and listen, Aaron Rodgers had his best game of the season so far and found his new weapon, Christian Watson. Now, <laughs> could, connecting on three touchdowns. Can they do that again? Alan Lazard, what they've been able to do on the ground game. To me, they're playing in Lambeau. They're playing in Green Bay. And I think that you look back to what, 2016, they were four and six as well. They went on a crazy run. This is Aaron Rodgers still reigning back-to-back -back MVP. I'm not counting them out. So I love my Titans. And, Dad, please, please don't get mad at me. I'm taking the Packers in this one. <laughs> All right, now in this next game, it's two teams heading in opposite directions. The Eagles, they've lost one in a row. The Colts have won one in a row. Of course, I'm just kidding. We look at the breadth of the work for both these teams. Philly at Indianapolis with Jeff Saturday undefeated as interim head coach. For everybody giving Jeff Saturday all that flack, all the former coaches talking about their upset, shouts out to Jeff Saturday because, you know, you know, a former offensive lineman, you know what he was going to do in that first game plan anyway. It was run the football, and they did that. So, with John Taylor, I, I'm going to flip it to the other side. The one thing that we haven't seen this year because the Eagles have been so great is the Eagles having to bounce back after a loss and they turn the ball over. So the ball security is going to be key in this game going up against the Colts. I think we see this team bounce back. Defensively, we do know that, listen, the, the, the Eagles are going to give up some yards on the ground just a little bit. But I, you have a guy like Taylor. He's a guy that can kind of change the, the landscape of the game. But I just look at Jalen Hurts, understanding what he did wrong. And I know they're going to have to figure out a little bit on, on the offensive side. Um, Offensively, we'll have to see what happens, but I'm going with the Eagles in this one, Chris. All right, last week the Cowboys found a way to lose. The Vikings found a way to win. They'll get together in Minneapolis. Your thoughts? Come on, man. Are you kidding me? <laughs> it's Kirk Cochains, man. Kirk Cousins is the best quarterback right now in the NFC North, and I know everybody wants to talk about Justin Fields, but what he's been able to do with this Viking squad has been phenomenal, and every single week people are counting him out. You and I had this conversation, Chris. The, the Vikings are finding ways to win ball games any way that it happens and, and going up against especially with a good secondary with Buffalo they found a way to be able to get it done and when you got a guy like Justin Jefferson you cannot stop him Dalvin Cook they didn't really even use him that much he broke off that long run which added over to 100 yards of rushing but I think this is the week that they lean on Dalvin Cook they run the ball play action and you already know what's going to happen Justin Jefferson making crazy catches, Kirk Cochain's going off, and I got to give shouts out to uh, the Vikings defense as well, coming up with big time interceptions when they needed to against Josh Allen and the Bills. I really think I'm going to keep riding on it. One of the hottest teams in the league right now, the Vikings, they get the dub. Let's go with a review of Peyton's picks for this week. He'll take the Packers in the frozen tundra over the Titans. Shout out Jeff Saturday, but he'll go with the Eagles against the Colts. And the Vikings, they've treated him well all season long. He'll stick with Minnesota at home against the Cowboys. Pay attention to Jared, and you might wake up Monday independently wealthy. JP, let's do it again next week. <laughs> Take care, Chris. Now, every week, our crack staff takes a listen around the NFL and picks out the best sound bites the league has to offer and then passes the fun on to you. You're welcome. You'll never know what you're going to get on an open mic. Laughter, lectures, and sometimes tears. knowing what <clears throat> some guys are doing. Like I said, just to practice what they're putting in their body just to sleep at night. Like, just so we can be there for each other. <laughs> and I wish everybody in that room felt the same way about this place. And as a leader, that f***s me off. I gotta play better, it starts with me. I gotta find um, ways to make some more plays out there for us, um, more touchdowns, um, you know, and, uh, and it's something that you continue to work for every day. You know, you focus on the little things, the fundamentals, the little things of the game. And, you know, I've been, been down before. doesn't mean that uh, we can't come out on the other end of it all. There's definitely people I've been to, you know. Um, and, you know, I, I think of my wife during 
like this entire time. She hears probably some of the things you'd like to hear, you know. <laughs> uh, but, I'll, but you know, I, I, I keep him there. He's a special arm talent, man. And he throws some, some passes that I don't think anyone can throw in this league, and that includes myself. I mean, he has a, a cannon for an arm. You watch it. I watch on film every week because we like play similar opponents. Um, and there's some throws you just kind of shake your head. We playing the snow? For real? It snows here? No way. It snows in Buffalo. They ain't tell me that. When I saw you, man, they did not tell me that. <laughs> and that will do it for us this afternoon for producer Phil Nardiello and all of our correspondents in the Next Star Nation. I'm Chris Hagan. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the games, and we'll see you next time on Big Game Bound.